Hi Leon, I'm back for math. I hope you are ready. You will need your math packet. You will need a pencil and you might need an eraser. So those are the things you can need for class. So if you don't have them, go get them now. Pause your video. And we have been learning about properties. So we've learned the Identity principle for addition, which means you're adding something to zero, stays the same. We've learned the zero property of subtraction, which means if you subtract zero from a number, it stays the same. We've learned associative property, and <clears throat> I did just a little bit of research last night on associative property, and I didn't get really far with it, but uh, associative and commutative property are a lot alike. Associative property means that you are regrouping. You can regroup. But I know that when you are, when you are, like I said yesterday, when you have division and multiplication and subtraction in parentheses, you have to do it in the order of the parentheses. Now, if you just have uh, addition or multiplication, you can regroup. It won't matter. And today we have one that's called commutative property which means you can flip the add-ins or flip the multiplication uh, parts and it won't change the answer. So I'm going to have to do a little bit more study on understanding the difference between associative and commutative. I know associative has to do with regrouping. You can regroup in multiplication and you can regroup in addition. But commutative means you can flip the add-ins or you can flip the multiplication and the multiplier. So, uh, you already know this, so I just circled ones that I thought maybe you needed to review. I circled 3, 4, and 5. I circled number 6 and 7. Now, all of those you can do by yourself, okay? They're not hard. They're simple. But I want you to look at number 8. Number 8 is exciting because they used a letter in place of a number. So let's look at it. It says 9 plus n equals 12. So we have, I know you already know it, just slow your little roll. 9 plus n equals 12. All right, so you've got it like this. So what you do to find a missing number in addition is you subtract because we have already know part, part, whole. This part is missing right here. So how can we find that? Well, we can go 12 minus 9, and it equals 3. And a marker to mark. It equals 3. So there is a way to set this up like an algebra problem. And it's like this. 12 minus 9 equals n. 12 minus 9 equals N. You can put any letter there. It doesn't matter if you put A, F, B, C, D, E. It does not matter. It just is representing a blank spot. Okay? And you're like, well, why do they use a letter? Uh, in this case, it means number. What number goes right here? Okay? So that's why they should be using letters to represent what they're talking about. Just the first letter. So what number goes right there is 3. So let's look at the next one. The next one, you need to write this down. Okay, so pause your video and write it down. 3, you have 3 plus n, uh, my marker's not marking that well, equals 11. All right, so I want you to set it up this way. You put the, you've got part, part, whole. You do not have to draw the triangle. But I'm just trying to get you to see it's part, part, whole. So how do we figure that out? We subtract 11 minus 3 equals n, the number we are looking for. What is 11 minus 3? 8. So n is equal to an 8. If you put an 8 where the n is, it will work. 3 plus 8 equals 11. So you are doing very simple algebra. Can you believe it? All right, let's look at the next one. It is 4 plus n equals 11. Okay, so how do we set the algebra problem up? If we're looking at part, part, whole, we put the biggest number at the top. We've got one over here. What goes over here? We can subtract to find it. So we set it up 11 
minus 4 equals n. What number is n? n is equal to 7. I know you already have this, but you're doing algebra. Can you believe it? So what you are learning in uh, first grade and kindergarten when you're doing addition and subtraction, you are actually starting algebra. And the reason I'm telling you this is because when I learned algebra, I remember thinking, why didn't they not just tell me this from the beginning? So you are actually looking at a number line and the number line is infinite because numbers never stop. So I can't write infinite numbers on here, but one, two, three, four, five, and it starts at zero actually. So when I'm adding, I'm moving up the number line. When I am subtracting, all I am doing is going down the number line. Okay, these are algebraic principles because you will start learning positive and negative numbers. But if you just know, if you're adding, you're going up. If you're subtracting, you're moving back on the number line. Okay, so you can also think of it in a grid. Okay, so if we have a grid, and we have squares on the grid, you have a table, all right? This is called the x-coordinate, and this is called the y-coordinate. And if you are subtracting, you're going back or down. If you're adding, you're going that way or up. And you can draw pictures with uh, phrases like what we're learning. And they have to be just a little bit more complicated, but I remember thinking when I was at the end of my algebra and they were drawing uh, on grids and they were using the sentence phrases to draw the picture on the grid. And I'm like, if you had just told me this from the beginning and I knew what I was doing and that I was actually making the picture on a grid, I would have understood it. So I'm going to try to explain it to you as we go as much as I think you can understand. All right, let's look at the story problem. It says Tom has eight, eight life jackets on his fishing boat. Pay attention to your numbers. He must have 12 jackets on the boat before the next fishing trip. So I'm just going to do a part, part, whole model. If I can get this marker to work. Ugh. I need some new dry erase markers. And I went to the school this morning and got paint and I forgot markers. So he needs 12. That's the biggest number. And we know the biggest number always goes on top. Right now he has eight. So we are missing a number right here. So what we could do is say eight plus some number equals 12. Or we could write it this way. 12 minus eight equals some number. Ah, Mr. Aubrey brought me a new green one. Thank you, Mr. Aubrey. Awesome. So 12 minus 8 equals N. So what is that? I know that you know that. It is 4. Oh, look at that nice green. All right, so N is equal to 4. Let's put it in there and see if it works. 8 plus 4 is 12. So we are missing the 4. So you, my friend, have started algebra. Look at you go. All right. So now we're going to look at the back of the page, and your mama is texting me, and she's telling me that I can come over. So I am actually recording this on Tuesday, but it is for Wednesday, but since it is Tuesday, I will come see you on Tuesday. And when I start recording ahead or doing lessons ahead before long, I get totally confused at what week and what day I'm on. But I know this is Tuesday working on Wednesday. All right, so on the back of the page, it says write the related fact family. So what they want you to do, let me put my cap on my marker. It says something plus something equals something. Well, you know if you've got a 6 and a 6 and a 12, what plus what equals what? You know the two smaller ones are going to equal the larger one, okay? So it's 6 plus 6 equals 12. And then to make a minus problem, what always comes in the front on the minus? Yes, the big number, because you can't subtract a big number from a small number. You can't take 12 away from 6. If you've just got 6, how are you going to get 12 from it? 12 minus 6 equals 6. Okay, so it looks like that. So see if you can finish the rest of those by yourself. Then it says solve using commutative property to write the related facts. So what does that mean? 
Commutative means you can switch the add-ins. We called it, before we called it writing the twin. So like if you have seven plus four, the commutative property would allow you to say four plus seven. Let's do the first one. Oh, it is seven plus four. So seven plus four is 11 on number four. So now I'm gonna do the commutative property. Four plus seven is 11, okay? So for kindergarten students in first grade, we called those the twins, but now you know, it's actually the commutative property. So see if you can do commutative property on number five. Now, let's look at the story problems together. I tell you what, I want you to do the story problems by yourself because I need to know if you can read and think, and I know that you can. You do not have to draw the picture because these are simple problems, but you do have to read them carefully and listen to what they're looking for, okay? If it's subtraction, you know the biggest number is gonna have to be in the front. If they're looking for a sum or a total, you're going to be adding, all right? Uh, on number nine, <laughs> it's a Jesus Bible question. Haley knows she needs math to learn skills. No, she needs to learn math skills because math is an important tool to help people to help people do what? What can you do with math? This is not exactly a Jesus Bible one. What can Haley use math for? I use math at the grocery store because I add up what I'm spending so I don't spend too much or I divide to find out how much it is per ounce. So I use math a lot at the grocery store. Uh, I use math cooking. I have to double recipes, or I have to do one and a half recipes, so I have to multiply my fractions uh, and add them. Uh, you use math. Uh, Mr. Aubrey has a uh, job where he has to draw cabinets for hospitals and theaters, and he uses a lot of math. He uses geometry, and he uses uh, a lot of geometry because they have a lot of weird shapes, and I think he uses probably some algebra too but a lot of math. He uses rulers and inches and he even has to convert it to centimeters and millimeters. Uh, how would a doctor use math? I know that when they figure out dosages on their medicines they have to use math. Uh, how would a builder use math? He would be doing a lot like Mr. Aubrey, except putting it in real life. He would have to be measuring how tall and how long to cut the board and how to draw an angle to fit that area that needs an angle, uh, how to measure for carpet, how to measure for paint. All of those things require math. So I would say every job you have has some math in it. Math is really important and math is basically patterns. If you can learn to see patterns, you can learn uh, to do math because that's what math is, is patterns. And those patterns are true. They're not like the English language. The English language is has so many exceptions and because we have so many languages together and we just have to learn the rules and we have to learn the exceptions. But it does have patterns too and I really love language more than math, but I know a lot of people like math better than language. So enough of that, and get on it, boy, and get it done, and I will check it when I get it, so you better have it right, and I will see you in a little bit.